I am Sean Webb, and this is your superior self. Hi, this is Rock Goddess, and I am rolling with your superior self. Hi, this is Dave Meltzer, and this is your superior self. Hi, this is Zach Poitra, and this is your superior self. What's up, everybody? I'm Aubrey Marcus, and this is your superior self. What is up, Superior Nation? Welcome back. I am Trey Downs, and this is Your Superior Self. Thank you for taking the time to download. Thank you for taking the time to listen. If you could leave a rating and a review and share, if you could, it helps me scale the podcast. It helps me get this out to those who may need it the most. Today's episode is pretty, pretty powerful. Powerful in the sense that I'm sharing with you. I'm being vulnerable right now because a lot of people do not have some of the belief systems that I currently have right now. I am growing and expanding spiritually. I am um, really just, I guess I'm on this quest of just finding, you know, the true version of myself, the higher version, the higher consciousness from that source that is the entire universe. And religion couldn't really give that to me. Um, so my spiritual journey has been just me basically just diving into a lot of science, a lot of neuroscience, quantum physics, um, reading a lot of religious texts. Don't get me wrong. Like I think religion is, is key in, in, in our world. I think it, it definitely is, has a place. And a lot of the teachings are spot on with Christianity like and, and Buddhism. I'm not taking anything away from that. I'm just saying for me to find my true self, I have to look at things a little bit differently and do a deeper dive, uh, especially in science. It's kind of weird because I, I actually found more spirituality in science than I have in religion. Um, and, and by that meaning, I mean through quantum physics, learning how matter is made up and how it travels and the theory of relativity, like a lot of that has pushed me to be more spiritual and it's crazy a lot of people don't think there's religion and science or i shouldn't say religion but spirituality and science there is if you really study quantum physics and look at some of the evidence that they're they have um discovered over the years nobody's really looking at that like they're not looking at the matter that we are the energy and how we travel in waveforms and the whole idea of creating your own reality like that's a thing in quantum physics i mean you can you could definitely do it and I'm learning a lot more about that just from Dr. Joe Dispenza and some of the other influential authors in that field. And so it has um, led me to have conversations with people like today's guest, Terry Ann Russell, who is amazing, by the way, like her new book um, just came out not too long ago. And it's, and it's, I'm actually really excited to get it. It's titled, um, from death to life, the incredible true story of Anthony Joseph, which is a channel text. It's actually her son who passed away not too long ago. Uh, she channels that text through, I guess he channels the text through her and it's, it's just powerful, you know, like it's everything that I've believed to be not true. Like I'm discovering more truth to it. It's pretty amazing, but Terry Ann Russell is a healer, a channel, uh, and a past life regressionist, which, and a medium. Past life regression is something that I've that I've learned uh, about more so in the last six months. Started with Edgar Casey and his texts and literature, um, finding out more about that uh, through my discovery through near death experiences and and reading a lot of um, books about the study of that and Dr. Raymond Mo Do Dr. Raymond Moody's. Uh, studies at the University of Virginia and it's amazing as well there's actually a theory of near-death experiences that you guys should check out but um, yeah I mean my I'm telling you right now science has led me to, to being more spiritual than anything else out there and I highly suggest that you guys go out and check it out like neuroscience the brain does some amazing things and, and to be able to like like meditation for me has been able has allowed me to be more uh, connected to that source of consciousness, the higher source of consciousness. Consciousness. Now, a lot of people uh, use psychedelics or um, shaman ceremonies to to reach that, and I am beginning to to reach um, higher consciousness through, through just through meditation. But it's taken me a long time to do that, like a lot of trial and error, and a lot of um, research that I've I've had to done for myself. 
and I, I will share the texts uh, through social media that have inspired me the most, and I will um, pursue authors like Terry Ann uh, to share their stories and, and their methods of connecting with that higher consciousness because I think it's just imp- that important. I think uh, for my growth, like I have, I posted something last night uh, when this airs, it's Monday, so I posted something Friday night on Instagram that was pretty amazing. Um, the book, so go back and check that out um, because it, it, it I had an, an aha moment and I'll, I'll go into that later if I can get this author on the show, but um Ah, it's pretty powerful and Terry Ann's story is pretty amazing and I'm excited for you to listen to it but before we get into it here is a little clip he had passed I think about 10 o'clock and the officer was there at, at two o'clock in the morning and I could feel him I could smell him I could hear him yelling at me at that time it was like garbled but he was yelling I'm okay mom I'm okay and he kept yelling that it was like there was a glass wall separating us. I was in such shock and I was so overwhelmed with emotion. You know, at that point, I was not believing that he was dead. I was like, this isn't happening. If you're talking to me, you're dead. And I'm not believing that you're dead. There's no way this is fucking possible, you know? So I, I like shut off communication with him. And um, I was, until I saw him, I would not believe that he was dead. It was just, you know, it was too overwhelming. I talk about uh, shock and trauma a lot. And in the book, I describe how when we go through these traumatic experiences, we... Yeah, it's just so amazing. Like, you go through your entire life, like, believing the mass beliefs, societal beliefs. And then you start having these small, like, kind of window openings into different belief systems or spirituality or science or whatever. And you start growing and your your spiritual being, like, is, like, pushing you towards this direction. But you're... But your smaller self, that ego, is like, whoa, man, that's not that's not what we believe, bro. That's not what we're trying to accomplish. Like you're you're trying to veer off the path, and I'm telling you to veer off that path. Like run off that path. Grab a freaking machete and start chopping away at the woods and the vines and the and the brush and create your own path. Like we follow the ideas that is pushed upon us by masses right like by people that by the community that says this is right but do you ever question that do you ever ask for yourself what is right and what is wrong do you take the time to do the research and find the data and the literature that supports different ideas there is absolutely nothing wrong with that there is a god out there that loves us unconditionally that wants us to find the truth and through the pursuit of gaining more knowledge you find that truth for yourself I'm, I'm telling you, I'm an example of that. I found so much truth for myself and just diving into so many different spiritual books. And it's not that you have to, con- like you don't have to follow or, or practice 100% what these guys are teaching. It's just like you have to keep an open mind to it no matter what it is. Like you can kind of be like, all right, so if you take near death experiences or not even near death, but like out of body experiences and you're like, oh, that's just too much for me. But listen to what it is. Like listen to the factual uh, data that they have to support some of this stuff. Like, just listen, keep an open mind, open mind to it. Um, after what is it? Um, life after past life regressions, like people totally do not believe in that, but some people use that for healing methods and, and purposes. And I'm, I can get behind that. If it helps you love someone right now today from going through a meditation that puts you in a past life, and you can kind of deal with the therapy that you kind of need in, a, in an untraditional manner and and it helps you like i'm 100 percent for that like who cares if it's like something that's out of the out of the norm like pursue that path for yourself and just be open to it that's all i ask and in this entire episode just be open to it don't condemn it because it might not be for you and you might not be ready to hear it but i'm telling you start doing research now follow the things that make you curious because you will find something in that that will question some of the beliefs and some of the ideas that you've had over your life and it's okay it's okay to question that there's nothing wrong with that you're not going to be judged for questioning something yeah but i don't want to take up more of your time than i have to (laughs) because it's a great conversation with terry ann and i know you're going to enjoy it but before we get into it, please follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram at tdowns80 and on Twitter at downstray. You can uh, leave me a message. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this. 
uh, go to yoursuperiorself.com, leave me a message. It, sends, it gets sent directly to my email, and I'm pretty responsive because I love being able to interact with the audience. Um, yeah, so without further ado, here is my amazing conversation with Terry Ann Russell. Hi, my name is Terry Ann Russell, and I am a author, medium, channel, and healer in Sedona, Arizona. Terry Ann, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing well. I want to say thank you for joining the show. This is going to be amazing. Thank you for having me. So it's an honor you... to share my son's words. Uh, yes. So go ahead and explain that. So you have a new book, From Death to Life. Um Go ahead and, and explain the motivation behind that, why you wrote that, and a little bit about what you do. Okay. My son passed uh, about 11 months ago from a sudden medical complication. He was 27 years old. Um, I have five children, um, three in their 20s, three sons in their 20s. I have a 15-year-old stepdaughter and a 10-year-old daughter. Um, so we're all really very close and um, we happened to be on vacation for a week in Vegas. It was his 27th birthday and my husband and I were renewing our vows and he was perfectly healthy and happy and showed no signs of any illness. And about three weeks later, um, I was guided to go see him up in Flagstaff. He lives about an hour north of me. And you know, other than saying he was a little tired, you know, nothing really was going on. Um, about three days later, uh, we were woken during the night uh, by an, a local officer who had come in to tell us that my son had passed. Um, mm. When the officers arrived, he was alive. They tried working on him. His roommate called 911. He was only sick uh, the day before. He had a fever and he was vomiting. And they sent him home with a stomach bug diagnosis. About four hours later was when they called 911 and they tried to resuscitate him. But by then, his um, what we found out through the autopsy was a piece of his um, pancreas wrapped around his spleen and he bled to death. Mm. His spleen ruptured. And so my daughter, who's 10, was born with a similar condition in 2009 with her intestines and bleeding internally for about three years when traditional medicine failed us, I turned to energy healing to help heal her. And that's how I got started um, my path, my pre-shattering, I call it. Um, she's been about four years hospital free now with no blood transfusions. Wow. Perfectly healthy. Wow. So it's been a journey. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your son and, and thank you for sharing that. I know that that can be very hard thank to you. put that out there and, be, and make yourself vulnerable. Uh, especially when it's a surprise, right? Or not, I mean, I say a surprise, but you know, when it's, when it's definitely takes us, um, you know, when you try to understand why it happens, right? Like, I mean, me spiritually now, like I'm a whole different level than I'm what I was before. And, you know, um, what your background is a little bit. So a, a little bit more about your background. You, you talked about energy healing, right? Like, what is that? So energy healing is spirit works through me to help heal clients, whether it's spiritual, emotional, physical, or mental. Um, and I do several types of different healing. Reiki is just one of them. Um, mm. So when we do do healing, we do a lot of clearing and healing. Uh, what happens in our body is we have emotions, whether they're from this lifetime or, or another lifetime, they get trapped in our body and they become stagnant. They create blockages or illnesses, uh, physical illnesses as well. Um, so if somebody comes in, say, like with um, anxiety, I'm able to work on them with my hands. I, I very rarely touch a client. Sometimes I am guided to touch a client, um, depending on the extent of what's going on. Um, so just laying the hands over them, work, spirit works through me, um, and we're able to remove some of that, that that stagnant energy that's stuck there. So if you've ever had anxiety, I've not. So I am very empathic when I work with clients. I, he I feel a lot in my body. So the client has a stagnant energy in their, their diaphragm from anxiety. Mm -hmm. I can feel that. It's like almost like I can't breathe. It takes my breath away. My heart starts beating very quickly. Um, so that's how I know when I'm working, as we get that energy to sort of move out of her body or his body, um, then I'm able to breathe easier. I don't feel like that, that lump is in my chest. So that's how I know that it has, has moved. 
Mm. So you take on some of their symptoms. Well, all of them, I do I because I'm very empathic. Mm. Mm. Well, how did how did this all start? I mean, you said when your daughter, right, when she was having um, um, difficulties, like you you researched this and you started. Did you is that how you got into it? Like you researched it and, like, and just started getting involved in it more, and then. Is it something that you have to be born with, some type of gift? I think we all have it. Yeah. We all have some sort of healing ability. We all have intuitive abilities. Um, I was raised very strict Catholic, um, an Italian family on the East Coast, New York and New Jersey. I could, t- um, I could, hear, so- I could hear the accent, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from um, Baltimore, so yeah, I can, I'm definitely I'm down, I'm down the street from you. So, <laughs> uh, so we were raised Catholic, and they have the their version of Reiki, which is laying of the hands. Um, so every religion has their own version of laying, mm. laying of the hands. So I was accustomed to it, and I always felt energy in my hands, like I would touch people, or people would just uh, come around me, and they become very peaceful all of a sudden. So I had this knowing within me. I sort of turned it off when I was a teenager. I felt um, like I was making bad things happen. I would have premonitions and visions. And so I shut it off for a long time. I, you know, I really lived a life. I raised three sons in New Jersey. Um, and I lived a life that I thought I should be living. Um, so what is that? Like they nine started to, five to grow up. Salary and all that. Yeah. 2.5 kids, the house, the cars, the vacations. Um, yeah, um, being a mom, you know, I sacrificed a lot so that they can have what they needed at that time. And in about 2008, a year before my daughter was born, I found Eckhart Tolle and I read his book, The Power of Now, and it changed my world because my sons at that time were uh, later teenagers, high school. And, um, you know, they didn't need me as much anymore. They didn't need their mom. So I was like really at that point that I think a lot of women get to when their children get older is, well, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? I know there's some, I know I wasn't just put here to be a mom. Mm -hmm. I know that I was always searching for something more. I knew there was more out there. Um, So that's really right before she was born that I was guided to, and I was 40 then when she was born. So I was really guided to find that inner deeper knowing within me where I should go and what I should be doing with my life. And, and that was just the way for them to get me to do it. That's amazing. Um, how did your family like react to you taking on the, this new practice? Like, was it, was it something that was that you easily could explain or is it something they understood is, was it hard to communicate that with your friends? Like, I talk about my, some of my philosophies and my wife just looks at me like I'm crazy. So, (laughs) but you know, the good thing about a spiritual partner sometimes is that, you know, as, as you're growing, she's growing. And I say that my husband as well, because he's not as spiritually open as me. And we've been together six years now Mm. and he is starting to see, especially after Anthony has passed, starting to see the whole world in a whole new way. Like, you know, it's true what they say. The world is so much bigger than what you can just see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, my parents, because they were Catholic and they believed in laying of the hands, they had an understanding of it. Mm-hmm. But my mother thought, you know, things like you could call him the devil and <laughs> all this so, crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. Um, so we're, we're like, you're, what do you, like, where, where do you work? You're in Arizona you, and you do a lot of healing. You do some of that. Like you have, you say you have visions. Can you see people's energy levels too? I do. Um, yeah. I, my clairvoyance is not as strong as my other clairs. So there's different clairs. I'm clairsentient, which is that feeling and I'm clairaudient. So I hear a lot of messages. Um, my clairvoyance is not as strong as my other clairs. So this um, book talks a lot about that though, like mm-hmm. your relationship with your sons now, even after he's passed. And um, can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, Anthony wanted me to know right away that it had to do with a contract. It was not malpractice. It wasn't a, a medical mistake. It was his time to go. He actually passed on a full moon lunar eclipse. He told me the doorway was open. Um, he told me the it, this was the unabridged verge, version of his contract. And because I do past life regression, I understand what contracts are. 
Um, so yeah, I was able to do a past people, life. Most, most people don't know what that is. Like past so past life, life regression, past. you can do a past life regression, which takes you into your past lives that you've lived, or you can do a present life regression. If you have trauma from early childhood, you know, sexual abuse or physical abuse that's been embedded um, and blocked and pushed down, we can look at that stuff too. You can be, we can look at interdimensional. We can look at in between lives where Anthony is now, he's in between lives. So we can look at with that in a past life regression as well. I love all of that. Like I just put the put that out on the episode. It's so crazy. My last episode <laughs> at the very beginning, I'm like, anybody out there who's a past life regressionist, in between lives, whatever, give me a call. And here we are. Um, and here we are. <laughs> so um, I'm very interested in the past life regressions. Like I just I I am very interested in that because it's like for most people that don't know, I do believe in reincarnation i believe that we live multiple lives i you know you know hundreds of lives and we're here to to gain knowledge to experience for the soul for the the big self and um the more that we learn the more that we grow uh one day we will i don't, I don't know how to explain it one day we will rise to be with god like on that level when our spirit or our big self gets enough you know learning lessons or has enough of that, I don't know, that being that, that love, like, I mean, it's just like, I don't know, like you said, contract, right? Like, you know, we mm -hmm. talked about the, your daughter having that, like a lot of some of the issues that we have on this, in this life now is, is from past lives, right? Like, yes. Um, some of the injuries that some people sustain or, or whatever, like, I, I wonder that sometimes, like I have stuck energy, like I do a lot of running, I can feel it. Like, it's not like the same location. It's like my legs, like my left leg will hurt. And then like, I'll massage it out, but then I'll feel the energy move down to my, my caps and that will hurt. And then I'll, you know, mm -hmm. I'll roll it out. And then next week, my, my other leg will start. I mean, so like, we're just made up this ball of energy and we are <laughs> like, yeah, like, but I mean like past, like some injuries, right? Like I broke my jaw, right. When I was, I don't know, uh, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So that is some, like it, that could be related to something in my past life. Right. Um, it could be something, you know, it could have been me dealing with a past trauma in a, in a former life. And that's why, I love reading these stories. I mean, cause like a lot of our past lives have, have, um, huge, huge effects on our lives now. Yeah. So let me tell you, so I did a past life regression on myself. That's absolutely true. Anthony and I, um, were husband and wife and I died and he watched me die. Hmm. So it was really my idea from what he tells me to come back. So not only could I experience that experience from, from my level as my soul, from my my growth during the time that I'm here, but also for Anthony to come in and to teach me as well. I mean, I say that my children are my greatest teachers. I believe that our children, you know, they teach us so much. And the children coming in right now are so evolved. They are so sensitive to other people's feelings and other you know they're sensitive to um food and you know hurting animals and all these different things that you know when i was born i'm 51 that they, we didn't come in like that <laughs> well, so the contract states <laughs> good the contract yeah, so the contract what? states um it's a extensive contract that we make not only anthony and i but we made that with our entire soul group and so there's a lot of beings that are involved in that and it's not just for the greater good of terry Ann and anthony it's for the greater good of humanity i mean if you look at the times that we are in right now the things that are occurring in our world um it's really the perfect time and place for this book to come out for people to understand the power that sits within them Mm -hmm. I think it's, this is a time of purification right now. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people are becoming more awakened to the to the light, to the to the, to their light, their internal light. And for in order for the light to purify, like a lot of that bad stuff has to come up. So I think you're seeing that in the world. Like you're seeing a lot of bad darkness stuff like rise up and in order to purify it you, ha you have to deal with it so that's what we're doing right now like we're all just trying to deal with it um so talk about the past life regression on yourself how do you do that i put myself into a light hypnotic trance 
um, and then I record it so that I can hear myself. And and usually because I don't remember it if I do it on myself. And and you know if a client, if I'm doing it with a client, say if I was doing it with you, you'd be in a light hypnotic trance, and I would record it so you can listen to it later as well. Because a lot of the times. Um, your higher self, your soul is speaking in those experiences and, and you won't remember them consciously. Um, so we record it so that you can go back and listen to it later on. Some things, I mean, people come out of past life regressions and they are just like sobbing or they've released so much. And, and I do mine a little differently because I am a healer. So I offer a lot of healing while my client is in the past life regression and we're talking about what they're going through at that moment. Um, I've you, seen how, some oh, crazy sorry. stuff. <laughs> yeah, like what? Um, people on other planets, I've had people describe to me uh, beautiful, beautiful planets that I've not heard of, names I've not heard of, um, beings, different types of uh, light beings and, and stuff like that who have come through in, the, in their progression. Mm -hmm. So people that are kind of like, did they come to you who are kind of like thinking this is all a big hoax and then they turn into believers afterwards? <laughs> I don't know. Most of my clients come in and, and with the awakening going on now with the ascension and we're moving up to the fifth dimension. Um, a lot of my clients are coming in and thinking they're losing their mind. You know, mm. oh, you know, I'm seeing visions or I'm hearing things or, you know, my grandpa who passed 30 years ago is visiting me now and I'm not understanding what's going on. So, you know, we do some work and I explain to them about ascension and what's going on and, and how we are as a humanity beginning to awaken. So what is ascension? So ascension is the earth. It's my belief that the earth is a living being. Uh, the earth has a heartbeat. The Schumann resonance is, I forget what it is, seven point something. But our heartbeat resonates with the same megahertz as the, the earth. And so the earth is going through a rebirth as well as we are. So as the earth is ascending and uh, the Schumann resonance is increasing, as a humanity, we need to increase our our vibration, our frequency. I talk about frequency a lot in this book because I was um, taken over by the dark very quickly and very early with my grief because my vibration was so low. Um, so as the earth vibrates at a higher uh, megahertz, we as a humanity need to vibrate at a higher megahertz. And, and that's why all this is happening at the same time. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I, the heartbeat, the earth's heartbeat. I always associate it with the ocean. Like I just, I don't know when I go to the beach, like I just feel like earth, every, all of consciousness like is right there. Like I just feel one with the earth right there. Like I feel like that. I don't know. I just, I tell myself it's the earth's, the earth's heartbeat, but it, cause it's like a spiritual place for me. Right. Like it's just, it's just so beautiful and all the creatures out there and you look out and you just see this endless wonder and you know it's just it's beautiful it's just everything about it it just calms me it just it, it's amazing um yeah i i just feel like a lot of the beach <laughs> um and there's a i mean I, i'm a big edgar casey uh fan uh and his book like one of his like he, what he had to do was moved to like Norfolk or something because of the ocean, like because of the power of it and how, you know, he was able to, to have these mm -hmm. visions, like stronger visions of where you need to be. And, and I, I, I feel like, you know, I, I don't know on my spiritual journey. Like I'm just, I'm, I think, I feel like I am starting to awaken. I'm not like fully there. I read everything that I can on like past life regressions, you know, in between lives um, cause I'm interested in, in knowing my past lives and what it, 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 you know, who I was, what I'm trying to learn in this, in this, in this lifetime, I feel like, you know, just being totally transparent. It's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a very driven guy. I, I enjoy, uh, accomplishing, accomplishing things. I, I enjoy this podcast and this is like something that I, that motivates me to get outside of myself and learn things just to learn them and, you know, knowledge for the mm -hmm. knowledge. And it's like, you know, what created that for myself? Like what, why, what am I trying to accomplish in this lifetime? What, what is the lesson? You know, like I want to help people awaken. I want people to, you know, listen to these types of interviews that have net, you know, that are traditional Catholics that are cradle Catholics and are like, what are they talking about? And to be <laughs> like, you know what, let me just, start thinking you know let me be, be open-minded to this right um but yeah but past life regressions 
um, and reincarnation. Like, it's just, you know, I think about it. Like, how long does it take to do a past life regression on someone? It depends on what you're looking at. Mine are usually two hours long. I've seen them go as long as four hours with certain people. And so you have to get them in like a meditated state, right? Like a, a, a different Like a light hypnotic trance. Yeah, like we, what, we do uh, deepeners to help them be uh, in a light hypnotic trance. Like, what is that? Like, how do you do that? How do I do it? Well, it's just through speaking. Um, you know, I'm taking them through a, uh, a hypnosis. And so they're fully awake, you know, but their their conscious is not aware, really. Their subconscious is what's speaking to me, their higher self, their soul. So, mm. you know, they're describing things that they have no idea when they come out of it. And their conscious is like, that was just like that shit crazy. Like, <laughs> I don't even know how that happened. Ah, that's so crazy. Um, I think, I, yeah, I... I got to quit one time it was like 300 dollars to do a past life regression is that about right well in sedona i charge 300 for two hours yeah well, i just wanted to make sure because i was like you know i'm i'm, I'm taking <laughs> estimates i'm making sure you guys are, are all in the same playing field and who you're guided to you know a lot of my clients come in and they're like i was guided to you or i don't know why i'm here after anthony passed i had a woman come to me whose child had passed i think he was maybe seven i don't remember how old he was um but he, anthony had just passed about eight weeks you know i'm back into the office and I, I was guided to go to the office that day and i was the only one there and uh this woman comes in and she said she wanted a, a mediumship session and i said you know explain my situation i'm not ready to do it yet it's very overwhelming for me and she said well can i tell you why i'm here and i said why and she said i have no idea how i got here i came to sedona for healing um because i heard about the vortexes and i walked by your office and I came in and I saw your face and I was drawn to you and my son, my child just passed about four weeks ago and I need to know he's okay. And I'm getting chills now telling you, it's like, I need to know he's okay. So I was like, okay, come on in and we'll do it. And of course we both cried hysterically through the whole entire thing. Cause at that time I was still very deep in my grief. So I could feel her grief. I had my own grief. Um, mm -hmm. It was very, very emotional, but I know that she was guided there, whoever guided, her son guided, and what Anthony actually showed me was that he helped that child cross. Anthony is doing the work now from the other side with a bunch of other guys mm -hmm. um, helping children cross over, helping children transition. So explain that. So like a lot of people... Um when they pass over, I, I read a, a ton of near death experience books. This is actually, those are actually what got me into this is mm -hmm. um, I was reading, I was into, I don't know. I think it was the near death experience books that got me into reincarnation. Um, but I read like three or four different ones and they were all similar. Like they weren't like the, their stories weren't similar, but like the same type of like they left their body and they felt this overwhelming amount of love and joy. And then they were met by somebody, whether it was a family member or Jesus or whatever they believed in. And then it was mm -hmm. like they, because it was a near death, they didn't die. And, you know, they went to this, the higher consciousness and they didn't want to go back to their bodies. So they were like, no, I don't want to go. Like, I want to go with you. And then like whoever that person was who met them was essentially like, it's not your, your time. Like you have to go back for whatever reasons. You're not done learning. And then they went back to their bodies and their lives have been changed forever. Um, so Anthony is doing that now. He's helping children cross. Yeah. I actually had a near death experience in 2017. Really? And so I had a similar experience. Yes, I did. Explain that. Um, I was very sick. I had an upper respiratory infection and, um, I think my daughter was sick at the time too. And, uh, I had a premonition first that I was going to go into cardiac arrest. And so I told my husband to keep an eye on me. I think I'm going to have a heart attack. You need to watch me. And he was like, I'm sure you're fine. You're just over exaggerating. You don't feel good. Um, so two weeks later to the day, um, I was very, very sick. I was on Benadryl and um, he gave me a baby dose of our daughter's albuterol. And albuterol, if you don't know, it's a nebulizer. It goes in through the nose. But I have a heart murmur, too, and it races your heart. Um, so what happened was I actually did go into cardiac arrest. Like, I was outside of my body floating around. Um, the paramedics 
people working on me in our bedroom. Everybody was crying, um, but different from the premonition. In the premonition, I stayed in the bedroom. In the near-death experience, I floated further and further away from my family. Um, and all I heard was, go back. And I don't know how long it was. I woke up, I was in the ambulance, and I was on my way to the hospital. Mm. But I was over, felt overflowed with this overwhelming peace and love that I've not experienced until Anthony passed again and he came in and he, Anthony actually works in my body when he does healing on me because I was so um, taken over by the dark and I had suicidal thoughts in the beginning. Um, so he would actually come into my body um, and do work. And for me, that was very intense because, you know, again, this is my child. It's just not spirit coming in. Um, this is my child. So I have that emotional connection as well. Um, but I was filled with this overwhelming, overwhelming love and peace that I had not felt before. And I wanted, I, trust me, I wanted to stay where I was, but I heard go back and I, it wasn't like I had a decision in it. I was just back in my body. I was awake all of a sudden and I was in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. That's crazy. That's awful. <laughs> um, just and look. after that, my life became very choreographed. I was guided to move to Sedona. Again, my husband was like, what? We just built this beautiful big house in Gilbert. We can't move to Sedona. And I'm like, well, we're moving to Sedona. <laughs> what do you mean guided? So like they, they- Guided, I get guidance. I either hear guidance or I'll have a dream, a premonition, or um, I meditate. So when I meditate, I get guidance. Um, when I meet with Anthony, Anthony guides me as well. So there's two ways I meet with Anthony. Either I either go to his place where he um, shows me everything. So that's through a, a meditative state and I leave my body and I astral travel with him. Or if it's necessary for him to come into my world, he can come into my world as well so he can move things. He slammed the bed, I'm the only one home, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> you know, he's like, <laughs> he thinks it's funny. <laughs> I bet he does. Um, mm. Just real quick, there's a, there's a book, uh, Application of Impossible Things by my near-death experience in Iraq by Natalie Sudman. She's actually, um, uh, she was in, I, want, I don't want to mess it up. She was in the Army or Marines or something like that, and she got blew up by a roadside bomb. Mm -hmm. And she actually describes her entire um, story, and which was incredible. Uh, actually, like, she he, like, talks about, like, her with whomever, like, her spirit family or whatever, and they're like laughing mm -hmm. about some like putting her body back together the way that she it's going, you know, cause you're obviously trying to get some type of experience or, you know, learn from this. And she talks about, you know, the body or the soul left the body before the bomb, right after the bomb went off or before it. So that way she didn't, you know, she didn't obviously feel it, but this book is incredible because it, it, it this is someone who, who describes it to a T remembers the entire thing, describes it to a T going, you know, on the other side with her soul family or relative, not relatives, but soul group and mm -hmm. like actually putting her body back together, but like messing with it and laughing about it, like, you know, messing with her eye or messing with her, you know, her hand was blown up and like putting everything back together and being like, right. because that's the reason that it's like for her to have a lesson. And like at the very end of the book, she's like, well, all I ask is that when I go back that you guys keep, you know, keep reminding me that you're we're here and then this is you know this is real and like they do that like you know throughout our life or daily life they'll do things and and show her signs that they're still with her it's pretty insane i mean it's you know read any near-death experience book and, it, and you'll see similarities like that and that's what started me down the path of past life regressions and reincarnation mm -hmm. because you know just because you know like i said i'm catholic as well so it's like um you know, I knew there was more out there. I just needed to be open-minded to it. Yeah. And Catholics have a lot of fear based. They're very fear based, um, religion. So, you know, there's a lot of fear around everything that, you know, doesn't exactly go along with the Catholic religion. Mm, yeah. So when Anthony died, he, he, did he sh come, did he show himself not to you, but did he come, did he make you aware immediately that he was okay? Yes, within four hours. So um, 
he had passed, I think, about 10 o'clock, and the officer was there at, at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I could feel him. I could smell him. I could hear him yelling at me. At that time, it was, like, garbled, but he was yelling, I'm okay, Mom, I'm okay. And he kept yelling. That. It was like there was a glass wall separating us. I was in such shock, and I was so overwhelmed with emotion. You know, at that point, I was not believing that he was dead. I was like, this isn't happening. If you're talking to me, you're dead. And I'm not believing that you're dead. There's no way this is fucking possible, you know? So I, I like, shut off communication with him. And um, I was, until I saw him, I would not believe that he was dead. It was just, you know, it was too overwhelming. I talk about uh, shock and trauma a lot. And in the book, I describe how when we go through these traumatic experiences, we leave our body to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. and that's what I did. I left my body um, so that I could protect myself from that trauma. And um, that's when he was very adamant, you know, I, I'm not to follow him. He took a lot of measures because the dark had taken me over very quickly. I had suicidal thoughts. I knew that was not me speaking. I knew I loved my son immensely and I didn't want to be here without him. But I knew that suicide was not the way. Suicide, I would not be with him. There was no guarantee that I would be with him if I took my own life. So he was very adamant with me about that time about working with me. And that's when he would enter my body and fill my body with this light. And I mean, I, I could tell you, I would be in the, the bedroom, hysterical, crying on the floor. And he would come into my body. And again, the same peace and love I felt when in my near, net, my near death experience, I would feel this overloading, overwhelming love and peace enter my body. And mm -hmm. I would calm down and I'd hear him say, you can do this, mom. I know you can do this. And I'm here with you. You know, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. He kept telling me over and over, I'm not dead. So the book, most of the book, this is the book. Um, it's channeled. Um, this is him on the back. Hmm. It's channeled. These these are his words. These are the words that he spoke so to me throughout the whole through, process. So they're channeled through you, right? And then you write them down. Um, yep. Oh, man, there's so many things I want to ask you. Um, <laughs> I, I just love it. I just love it. I, does it make you feel any better? Like, I mean, I mean, any better, but, you know, losing a loved one on earth is hard, but like knowing that he's there, right? Like, does that make you feel any better that you can still speak to him? Now it does. In the beginning, I didn't want, you know, their loss is loss. Um, this is my child. I, you know, I mourned the, the phys I guess what surprised me the most about the grief was the physical pain in my body. I didn't understand the physical pain that was going on in my body. Um, it felt like somebody ripped my heart out. Um, you know, if you have children, you understand. You never want your child to be even hurt or face any adversity in their lives. Nevertheless, to leave before you. So, you know, I felt like somebody ripped my heart out. And going forward, I really truly now see it as a gift. You know, I, I have this beautiful relationship with him. I'm so grateful for all that he's taught me. I mean, I'm not a writer. When he told me we were writing this book, I was like, you're freaking crazy. There's no way mm -hmm. I'm writing this book. <laughs> Do you remember? Like, and then he it? guided me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of it. Yeah. Yes, um, he guided me to the publisher, to the editor. Um, you know, they were like, this, the editor's like, this just doesn't happen. You just don't email a publisher and get a book. And I'm like, well, this is what happened. <laughs> Yeah, I just got so done. these all these crazy synchronicities, you know, it was like yeah. all this crazy stuff was happening. So it was just, it's been an amazing, he still teaches me so much about where he is and, and the journey that we're going on together now um, as we go forward with the other books that are coming through and the information that he's bringing through. So. Amazing. I just got done reading one of the Seth books. Are you familiar with those? Uh. I've heard of Jane them. Roberts. They're like 1970s. Like the being Seth oh, comes wow. down and use and speaks to her. And, uh, it's pretty, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Like Paul Selig. I'm really, I'm a big fan of Paul Selig. Um, I don't know if you're not, if you're aware, aware of him. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. his books are really, I can't wait for his, his new book. I think it's alchemy. Um, and then I, I can't wait to get, my hands on this one too i just i just I, I love that right like the like to 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 know that someone's watching over us and trying to help us out you know like and it's channel yeah, tech there's so. other beings i channel i've channeled other beings since i've been in sedona before anthony passed as well and we channel a uh, a consciousness called nyandala now 
and I've channeled other beings, um, Baal and Mule. Um, so, you know, there's other beings out there. There's other consciousnesses um, that exist, like Paul channels um, and uh, th like you're saying, Seth. So there, mm. there's definitely something to it. You know, there, there are these beings that are even helping us from other interdimensional beings. Yeah. You know, they're helping us as well. Interdimensional, yeah, or inter in interdimensional and uh, yeah, I mean, that's what the Seth, Seth books talk about is like, you know, once you get so many lives here, then they kind of pick up and go somewhere else. Um, just out of curiosity, I'm going to throw it out there. Is, is, can you channel anything right now? When I channel, I go into a light hypnotic stamp trance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's no way I can you can tell do that. you, I could tell you what he says. If you ask me a question, I will ask him and telepathically he'll tell me. Ask Anthony. Mm -hmm. Um, let me think. That's a, that's all right. Um, can it be about anything, or can it be about me, or can it be what, anything? I'll see what he says. He um, doesn't know everything he says. Well, can he <laughs> ask him? Ask him how many how many lives does he know? If how many lives that I that I've lived. He says there's too many to count. He feels, he said, you feel very much like an old soul. There's a part of you that truly exists on this plane of knowing and that you've been searching. Um, but within you, your soul, your soul understands and your soul guides you. So follow that always. Mm. So many lives. Many, many, probably as many as him. He's an old soul as well. He he's lived many, many lives. Yeah, because I was I was, uh, I think Edgar Casey was talking about a lot of the people that are that are in my generation were from, um, Atlantis. Is that right? Like the, mm -hmm. like, old old back in the day. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we're starting to come. It would come. make sense with your. Um, Attraction to the water and the beach. I have also attraction Lemuria. Have you heard of Lemuria? Mm -mm. Lemuria is similar to Atlantis, but in Sedona where we have those uh, beautiful mountains because I was like I don't even like the mountains. I want to be by the water <laughs> and they're like we're well, going to Sedona <laughs> um, But Sedona was underwater. Sedona at one time mm. was all underwater and that was part of Lemuria that so That's awesome. like a Polynesian version of Atlantis, I think that is awesome. I, I, I just love this. I love, I love that, you know, cause you, you have this feeling, you have this vibration, you have this, this idea that, you know, I, there is truth to that. Like I, I, I know, like I, I just, I just have this, not many people awaken. Like you think about people out there right now that are listening to this, that are like, these guys are fucking nuts. Like, <laughs> you crazy. know what I mean? Like crazy, but that's because they are just not ready for that, you know, and people might not ever yeah. go through the lot. I think about, you know, my parents and they're, they're comfortable doing what they, they do. And, you know, he's, my dad's a great guy and he's, he's comfortable and he has this idea and his philosophy that, you know, all you need to do is love. And that's, that's great. That's off. That's, that's awesome. Right. But there's also this, this, um, you know, you, you do have to love, but unconditionally, you have to love everyone unconditionally, even when they, you know, um, punch you in the face like you got you got to love them back you got to turn the other cheek and um there, there, there's just i don't know I, I just try to help people understand and i don't want to force anything on anyone um ever um, no and you can't you can't make somebody listen to something that they're not ready to accept either that's not your job you know they have their own contract their own way of doing things until they and because we have free will here you know, it's totally up to us if we decide to open. But that's why I talk about frequency a lot. We are we are made of energy and we are these frequency beings. When my energy, are you familiar with David Hawkins? No. So David Hawkins lived in Sedona for a long time. He wrote many books, um, but he talks about the map of consciousness. And on the map of consciousness is uh, lower vibrational energies, which is like grief, fear, shame, guilt. And then higher vibrations, vibrations such as love, joy, peace, enlightenment. 
Um, so those are the higher vibrations. Um, when you're down here in that grief energy, you can get attachments, you can hear, um, get alternate personalities. You can get, like I have said, I had suicidal thoughts that were not mine. I, I, I felt this darkness attached to me. So by raising our frequency, when I work with clients, with energy healing to raise their frequency. We wanna raise you 500, 600 and above. We want you to be a high level frequency so that A, you cannot be taken over by the dark and B, so you can learn to live from that heart space like your dad was saying. The more we see people for who they are at their heart space, you know, you can never hate anybody like that. You know, the world would shift and change if we could just see people for the energy that they are. Mm, yeah, it's like, it's like the way that I look at it is like the ego. The ego is driving a lot of people's decisions, like that falsehood or that false idea that the ego is them. You know, like you walk into a room and say, you know, you, you know, start looking at people and judging and, and, you know, saying I'm better than them. And that's the ego. And then, but to realize and step back that, you know, we're all the same, like we're, we're all the same. Like we're all a part of one source, one consciousness. And to, to, to love that to, because to love them is to love yourself. And when they Absolutely. do something, when they do something against you, you know, if you love them, if you just immediate and forgiveness is a big thing too, like forgiving them and just loving them. But if you're doing that, they're only hurting themselves and because it, it can never hurt you, you know, like it can never hurt you. If you just, right. if you immediately forgive and love, and I know it's hard. Um, you know, you can remember the act, but to forgive the act and just love that person for who, you know, for what the, not for what they do, but for the being that they are. I don't know if that makes sense, but yes, that's what and for I the try. contract that they took part in your life. You know, I say that about my ex-husband. We went through a tumultuous, tumultuous divorce after, you know, over 20 years. And um, I had to do a lot of soul searching and learn to forgive him to get to where I am. He played a big role in, in my purpose here. He taught me a lot about how I didn't want to be treated and, you know, the way, how much love that I did deserve. You know what I mean? So he, even though it was a difficult and tumultuous relationship near the end, he taught me so much from that relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. Sure. Just another contract. Mm -hmm. so he, he had was, had to sign. Yes. He was part. Yes. He was in part of that contract as well to teach me, to, for me to grow. So does Anthony like hang out with you all day? Like, does he just kind of, <laughs> he comes in a lot. Um, he's here a lot. He'll, he'll celebrate with us or if it's, you know, just something I need to know. Uh, Do you see him or you just feel it? I don't always see him. I have seen him a few times. I, I feel his energy when he comes in because I'm a medium. I have a lot of spirits in my home. My husband's dad hangs out um, in the office. We have a lot of spirits. I work with two beautiful, amazing medium psychics that have been in the business over 30 years so i'm the newbie so they have met took me under their wing and taught me and that was part of our contract as well you know i met them about a year ago when i was guided i was at, meditating at airport mesa up here in sedona mm -hmm. and i heard go see Roz at sedona soul sisters and i was like i don't even know who that is i'm not going <laughs> <laughs> That's and i did go about two weeks later and i met Roz, and she's like oh my god she's like I feel like I've known you forever. And I'm like, I feel the same way. This is really weird. <laughs> so Anthony is, you know, he's just like that. He is here a lot. He, there's so much. And he just doesn't come to me. Let me tell you, he has come to people that I've gone to high school with. He has showed up in their dreams. He leaves them messages. He'll leave them. He leaves me a lot of hearts. So he'll leave hearts for them. And they call me and they're like, oh, my God, I think Anthony was here. He left me a heart and he wanted me to show you. So I'm like, oh my God, that's great, you know. So he that talks is. to people that normally would not be spiritually open, but now he can connect with you in a dream. The dreams are actually the easiest way for spirit to communicate with you. So pay attention to everybody. It's pay because we're going to, to their, to, we're going to like their state, their dimension, mm -hmm. right? When we leave our consciousness, because like whenever, like what really got me was I was reading a book, and they're like, you know, when you're when you have these dreams that you're falling, your your consciousness is falling back to the body. That's like when you fall, mm -hmm. you feel that falling and all of a sudden you wake up, you're like, it's like, because you're you conscious, jump, right? Yeah, you're mm -hmm. conscious. I have them all the time. Like, I feel like mm -hmm. I'm falling and I wake up. Like that's the consciousness falling back. And then, you're like, bam, you're back yeah. in your body. <laughs> 
boom, back in, back in here in the matrix. Um, I had a crazy experience with that. I was actually, I was astral traveling in a dream and I was being chased by these reptilian beings. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with reptilian beings, but they're not very nice. Um, and they were jumping from like car to car chasing me and my daughters. And this woman had my husband and I couldn't get to him. And I knew if I could touch him, I could get him out of this trance he was in. So what happened was we were sleeping and one of the kids made a noise, woke me up while I was shot back into my body so quickly. I was shaking. I was crying. I, I didn't even understand where I was at that point. I was like, where am I? Because I, where I was was not here. <laughs> That is awesome. You know what though, too, like there's just so many urges a lot. Like uh, I'm so torn, like to, to ask people like yourself or Anthony or Paul Selig or anything like that. Like, you know, what is our meaning here? Like, what is it that we're supposed to do? Like, what is our path? And it's like, it's so tempting to ask those questions, but it's like in the same sense, like I, I fight with myself all the time because it's like, you know, do you really want to know? Like, I feel like you're on the right path. You're doing the thing. Um, you know, it, well, your path shifts and changes as well. You have many directions you can follow. It's not one set path. And because we have free will, you know, I tell people when they come in, like, you can come in, I can tell you're going to have steak for dinner and you can go to dinner and have chicken. That's your free will. You know, that's the easiest way to explain free will to somebody. You know, I can't tell you everything. For me, I know that my path is to teach people love love of themselves and love of others. You know, my heart space and, and the healing work that I do is truly based on love. So one part of my purpose is to teach others about love. Mm. So, a, you know, it I can be, people want to see their, their their life purpose as something like, you know, extensive and long, but sometimes it could be something simple as teaching somebody something. You know, we all have these, um, these contracts and we have big contracts and little contracts, but everybody we come across and meet you know, you're teaching me as I'm teaching you. And that's one of Anthony's messages as well. That's awesome. Um, I got a question for Anthony. Uh, I've been struggling with this quite, quite, a, uh, quite a bit recently. Like I'm very interested in psychology. Um, I, I'm going back to school and I really want to get my degree in something either organizational or um, I don't know, clinical or not. Ask him like, because I, I want to know like what area I should be studying as far as like, because I'm very interested in consciousness and psychology, like ask him like, where does he see me or, or, you know, basically, you know, enjoying that type of or section of psychology. He's like, dude, why haven't you taken any like <laughs> regression courses or anything? Have you taken anything? Any uh, hypnosis or regression? No, or? nothing, nothing like okay. that. Um, I this actually case. had my first psychology class um, next fall. Uh, it's like I've had 100, 100 level back in my, my heyday at University of Delaware, but now I'm back in, in school at University of Baltimore and I'm taking my first psychology class, but I haven't taken any regression classes or anything like that. Like I thought about it. But I just don't know where to go. You know, like, I don't know where, mm -hmm. I don't know where to start looking or whatever. Yeah. Start searching and stuff. Cause he feels he's saying that definitely that would be a good path to follow. You know, the interest, the peak interest that you seek is already within you. Your soul is just guiding you in that direction. You just have to follow that path. Um, I went to school for psychology and um, I got my, associates in psychology and my bachelor's in human services. And I just graduated, God, last year or something, but I was going in the social work world when this all occurred. Mm. <laughs> going in so it is about, work. you know, tr truly helping others. You know, um, I was always interested in psychology. The brain always fascinated me. It was like one of those things that, you know, was so interesting to me and past life regression like you, I was, always interested in. and when I took my first course in past life regression I was hooked I was like oh my god I've been searching for this my entire friggin life that is awesome yeah I gotta research that because that is something can you do it online I did all mine online yeah oh, cool and I'm sure now you would have to yeah absolutely for sure <laughs> Um, how do you meditate? Like, that's one thing I've been trying to, that's, that's what I've been struggling with. It's like meditation, mm -hmm. like trying to feel that. Do you do that guided part. meditation? 
Uh, no, what I do is I'll put some meditation music on and then I'll just sit in front of the, mm-hmm. my fireplace because I, I'll i go run to, just to get my different levels of consciousness. So, I'll, you know, I'll mm-hmm. go from beta to theta to alpha or whatever, or alpha, beta. I can't remember. What it is. I think it's beta, alpha, theta. Um, beta, delta. <laughs> yeah. And I'll try to change my consciousness and come back and I'll sit in front of the fireplace and I know it's hot, but I want to feel that warmth on my chest, you know, like to get that heart that warming feeling Mm -hmm. and then I'll just listen. I'll close my eyes and I'll start listening and try to focus into my breath. And then sometimes if I'm really focused hard enough on my heart area, like right here, uh, I can feel like the the energy rising. And, Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I've just heard so many stories of being able to have that out of, out of body, like higher consciousness, like like feeling that joy that you talk about during Mm -hmm. near death experiences and, and, raising your consciousness to be with the higher consciousness like i'm trying to get there i didn't know if you had any yeah tips. um i would say start with a guided meditation like you're doing a journey on my youtube channel i have a guided meditation to uh, meet your inner child um so you can do a, a meditation like that because when you have a lot of thoughts in your head mm-hmm. it's hard to meditate sure. um so when you're doing a guided journey it gives your ego something to do so it's like I'm walk, you know, you're walking through a forest. And that's what I do when we're going through a past life regression too, before I take you into your, your hypnosis, um, we go on a little journey. So, you know, they take you on a journey, you're going through a forest, you know, you come to an opening, you see a tree, you sit beside the tree. And so your ego has something to do while you're meditating. So all of these things can happen. There is something else though, I can send it to you. Uh, my friend Jason sent it to me and I don't remember the name of it now, but it's different levels of this meditation. It was called something 12, I think, but I will look at it and send it to you because he had wonderful success. He connected, he's not a medium. He's the editor of my book and he had wonderful success, not only connecting with Anthony through the book, but then through learning with me how to experience and see and understand the signs that are coming through. He was able to connect with loved ones in spirit by doing this uh, meditation. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, I could speak to you all night and mm-hmm. you and Anthony, you guys have been great. Um, Terry Ann, how can people connect with you? You can find me on sassysoulhealing.com or I'm also on Sedona soul sisters.com and I'm all over Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I got to check you out on Facebook. I got to friend you up. Um, what do you want your legacy to be? Wow, that's a great question. You know, I always wanted my legacy to be, I always wanted to be a mom. I was, you know, I was a mom at 21. Mm. I always, my oldest son is going to be 30 this coming September. Um, I always wanted my legacy to be um, my children and the love that they had for one another. So I would have to say that I truly want my legacy to be that um, people understand the love that's with, within them, that I've taught them, or that they were able to see that love. Because when we truly see that heart space, that love, not only that we come from, but that we all come from, and that we're all the same, we're all this oneness, you know, that's why we have such an immense connection with people. When you are able to meet somebody and instantly connect with them, that's a cellular memory. So mm. I would like my legacy to be that I taught somebody how to love. I love that. I, I 100% love that. Um, thank you to An- you and Anthony for joining the show and hanging out with me today. This has been an amazing conversation and, and, and totally like just, you know, my heart chakra is on fire right now. Just, you know, hanging out with you. (laughs) Well, I appreciate it. It's an honor to share Anthony's words with you today too. I appreciate you. I want to say thank you to Terry Ann for coming on the show and helping us awake more and just being open-minded to different spiritualities or spiritual practices. I mean, who says it's really, I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to get into that right now because I know it's going to fire some people up, but honestly, like, Let's all just try to be more open to different experiences and ideas of spirituality and not question what we feel and what we truly, what truly is pushing us in a direction that we are curious about going. Don't question it, just follow it. And then when the ego tries to tell you, oh, that's not right, that's not the way you're supposed to go, question that and ask yourself, why am I? 
why am I so scared? Because the ego is trying to protect you. It is an, an archaic, an archaic system that our body has evolved to produce, to protect us from back in the day. And our bodies and brains have evolved to form such systems to protect us for survival. So yes, it questions a lot of different beliefs and it questions a lot of different uh, scenarios to protect you from death. And if you think about it, if you question anything in society, you're you know, maybe not now in these days, maybe, I don't know, it depends on where you're at. Uh, but if you ever question society and different belief systems, like it takes, it takes a lot of bravery to do that. And it takes a lot of guts to stand up for something that you believe in. If it's not the norm, you see it all the time. People get really upset with you if you don't believe in what they believe in. And then sometimes we're not strong enough to really stand up for ourselves and, and validate that belief system to the masses because obviously um, we, we care about fitting in. We care about the, we care about that because it it's how we were built to survive is by the herd mentality. Anyway, look, I appreciate you listening this far. <laughs> I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I just want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. Please follow me on social media, Instagram at tdowns80 and on uh, Twitter at downstray. Don't forget to check me out on yoursuperiorself.com. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. I really hope you guys have an amazing day and much love and peace to you guys. Later.